Are women bad at math? A lot of people think that. Heck, a lot of women think that. Yet saying it out loud will still get you fired from some jobs. But more importantly, is it true? The answer is that it depends on how you look at the question. Do we look at average test scores? The sex that excels at the top level of math? Or how about the opposite, the ones that are most likely to perform poorly? All of those have different answers, but there are definitely gender differences that surprised me when I dug into the numbers. So that's the elephant in the room. And we don't learn anything by ignoring it. I'm Ken LaCourt. I dug deep into this topic, and I'll try to give it to you in a fair way, because there's nuance all over this one. We'll first take a look at the numbers in America. What did the standardized test show? We'll look at the gender gaps worldwide, and then at the possible reasons for those gaps, which, as is often the case, a mix of nurture, the social explanations, and nature, the role of genetics. I won't give you pat answers because that's just not how the world works, and I'm not trying to sell you anything. Just to get us a little smarter over the next 10 minutes. Let's start by looking at the numbers in America. Nationwide standardized test scores for the SAT and advanced placement exams. So math scores for the SAT, which is the largest college placement test, they range from 200 to 800 points. In 2022, the average SAT math score for boys was 530, while girls averaged a little lower at 512. Now, that's an 18-point difference, but it's roughly two correct questions on an exam that typically has 58 questions. It's a small difference, but there hasn't been one recorded year where girls have outperformed boys. But that gap has been shrinking. In 1985, for instance, girls trailed boys by almost 60 points. Today's smaller difference is a clue that something more than biology is going on. But look, average scores don't tell the whole story either. I mean, what's really interesting is when we look at the extreme, because boys do the best and the worst on the SAT. They dominate the top and the bottom of these scores distributions. Some numbers. Of students getting in the top 10% of SAT math scores, 61% are male. And they're more than twice as likely than girls to earn a perfect 800. I mean, that's dramatic. But, and we see this in other fields as well, when you look at the lowest 10% of scorers, boys are overrepresented there as well, making up 56% of that group. Researchers call it the males at the tails phenomena, meaning that when you look at a distribution curve, boys are more variable in their math performance and are seen more at the edges. On the advanced placement math tests, once again, boys score higher at the top end exams. And also again, that gap is getting smaller. In 1995, for every 100 boys getting the highest score, a five, only 52 girls did the same. You fast forward two decades, and by 2019, that number was 69 girls for every 100 boys. But tests aren't everything. How about classroom grades? Despite those test scores, girls consistently outperform boys in math classrooms. And they also get higher grades overall. In fact, by graduation, girls not only have higher GPAs, but often complete advanced math classes at rates equal or higher than boys. So some of the differences may just be the way that girls and boys are wired. Girls are better at a lot of the executive functioning skills needed to, to succeed in the classroom on any subject. They're more likely to plan ahead, set academic goals, and work to achieve those. On the flip side, girls often have higher levels of test anxiety than boys, which could certainly impact things as well. Meanwhile, boys overall tend to be performance-oriented and thrive in competitive environments like high-stake tests. So are tests accurately measuring math ability? Are factors like test anxiety and stereotypes skewing the results? Or do we have an instance of the greater male variability hypothesis, which I'll get into in a little bit? If we look at broader measures like the National Assessment of Education Progress, it's often called the nation's report card, and it, it measures kind of more fundamental math skills, we find almost no gender differences. So in the United States, the math gender gap, it, it's not as simple as like boys win and girls lose. Boys lead slightly on standardized tests overall, particularly at the highest levels where they excel even more. But in classrooms and broader assessments, girls hold their own or even outperform. Looking at gender gaps worldwide, things get even more complicated. Every three years, the Program for International Student Assessment tests about a half a million 15-year-olds from over 80 countries. It's the gold standard for measuring global math skills, and it's got some surprises. In many places, girls outperform boys by surprising margins. In Jordan, for instance, 15-year-old girls score an average of about 15 points higher in math than boys. In Qatar, Bahrain, Malaysia, Thailand, girls do better as well, sometimes with bigger gaps than anything we'd see in the United States. On the other hand, Italy has the largest gender gap favoring boys. 
Overall, though, boys outperform girls on these tests. Across 80 countries tested, boys scored significantly higher in math in 40 countries, while girls scored higher in 17, with the rest really not showing that big of a difference. Also, that gender gap is shrinking in some countries, but that's not uniform either. Some Asian countries that emphasize intense math training, like Singapore or South Korea, they often see higher overall scores for both genders, with a minor tilt towards boys at the very top. Japan, it's historically shown one of the largest male advantages, but that's narrowing as well. Meanwhile, some progressive countries like those in Scandinavia, they show no meaningful gap. So how does the U.S. stack up globally? Well, the, the math gap is, it gets a lot of attention here, but it's really not as dramatic as what you'd find in much of the rest of the world. But no matter where you look, there's that long tail effect, especially on standardized tests. More boys just show up at the highest and lowest extremes. Okay, so why? What explains these differences? Let's start with nurture, some cultural explanations. One of the explanations is, is something psychologists call a stereotype threat. The idea that simply being aware of a negative stereotype can crush your performance. In one experiment, women were told a math test showed no gender differences, and they performed every bit as well as the men. But in a control group, women's test scores dropped significantly when they didn't hear that. That mental pressure and worry about confirming someone else's low expectations, sometimes that can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Similar studies in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East keep finding that once a negative stereotype is triggered, performance suffers. Confidence and anxiety play a big role in all of this as well because men tend to be more self-confident. A recent survey found that 76% of American high school boys describe themselves as, quote, frequent and confident in their math class, compared to only 58% of girls. And on a personal note, I, I was talking once to a mom who had both girls and boys. She said that when her boys struggled with a math problem, they blamed external causes, like unclear teachers, or even insisted that the math problem itself was just wrong. Her girls, on the other hand, they blamed themselves, asking what was wrong with them that they didn't understand that problem. Now, that's a sample size of just one family, but there's likely something to that. Worldwide, girls consistently report higher math anxiety, even when their performance matches boys. And anxiety alone can affect test scores, turning self-doubt into a measurable disadvantage. Even in top performing schools, we see teenage girls consistently rating themselves below their actual skill level, especially when compared to boys with similar abilities. Countries using collaborative teaching methods, like Norway and Sweden, they tend to narrow gender gaps dramatically. Here, teamwork takes priority over competition, and that seems to give girls a boost. On the flip side, countries that emphasize individual competition, like Italy or Japan, they often see larger gaps favoring boys who thrive under that pressure and enjoy risk-taking more. And we see the dynamic in other professions as well. But despite excelling in classrooms, way fewer women than men choose math-heavy careers. In America, women earn just 23% of engineering degrees and make up less than 25% of jobs in computer science fields. But is that because of stereotypes in society? I mean, in America, the education system and nonprofit groups, they've spent a lot of time and money encouraging girls to get into STEM fields over the past decade, and the numbers are still low. Is it maybe that girls just prefer other careers over math intensive ones? That's certainly a possibility. In fact, ironically, some of the nations with the highest level of gender equality see wide math participation gaps. When they feel free to choose what they like, girls seem to move away from math careers. Hey. If you're getting anything out of this, it's a good time to remember to subscribe to see more of them. And also, I'm not perfect. If I screw up on anything here, let me know and I'll address it in a pinned comment below. Okay, so we talked about society. Now let's talk to nature, the difference that might come straight from biology and genetics. Let's start by looking at something called the greater male variability hypothesis. Now, I first discovered that idea when I was looking at why men dominate top level chess, and they just absolutely do. It's a biological explanation for the males at the tails phenomenon that we, that we see in a lot of places. And it was first noted by biologist Charles Darwin, who wrote that physical body parts of males, among animals and people throughout the world, virtually always had a larger range of variation than women. Scientists soon discovered that the concept applied to mental abilities like IQ, and as we showed, math skills as well. The hypothesis part about it is the biological theory which focuses on men having one X chromosome, while females have two. In females, one X chromosome can balance out or offset the effect of the other, 
but males don't have this backup. This means that any strong genes, whether beneficial or harmful, have a bigger impact on males, leading to more men appearing at both the highest and lowest extremes of abilities. Okay, so now let's talk about spatial reasoning, another biological factor where gender differences continuously pop up. Spatial reasoning is your ability to mentally visualize, rotate, or manipulate 3D shapes in your head. It's crucial for advanced geometry, physics, engineering. Research consistently finds men, on average, outperform women on these tasks by about a half a standard deviation. In mental rotation tests, puzzles that require you to spin objects around in your head, men typically score about 35% higher. That's a huge deal in fields like architecture, physics, or certain types of math where strong visualization skills means faster problem solving. Another potential factor is hormones. For instance, high levels of testosterone are linked to increased risk taking, and in some studies, they show a slight boost in spatial performance as well, but the jury's kind of still out on that one. And finally, I don't want to ignore something I mentioned before, innate preferences. In some very gender equal societies like Scandinavia, women are strongly encouraged to get into STEM careers, and they just don't do it. Despite massive efforts, women in Norway and Sweden still choose STEM fields significantly less than men, often at rates even lower than other countries where they don't have that equality push. It's very possible that women just prefer fields with more direct social interaction, while men lean more towards abstract problem solving. And even within STEM careers, women often choose fields like biology and medicine, which requires heavy math but focuses on life sciences and people. Men cluster more in physics and computers with more abstract math, and it's a pattern that appears worldwide. Look, like every complicated thing in life, there's no easy answer, especially trying to determine whether something is driven by culture or biology. But I, I think maybe it's both. In the end, Biology and culture both seem to play an undeniable role in shaping math performance. And there's another area where that same debate is ongoing, and it's a bit of a bizarre one. The gay voice. Many gay men have a distinct speaking style. I mean, not all of them, maybe not even most of them, but it's not just a stereotype. It's a real phenomenon that's been studied by linguists, sociologists, and psychologists. So what's that all about? You can find the answer here. It's, it's, it's a fascinating one. Hey, thanks for joining me. I love researching these and letting you come along with that as well. If you enjoyed it, come back for more.